Good morning. I am starting out in the greenhouse only because I came to get some foraging baskets and some scissors. So today we're going to forage our yard. That is right. I want to use as many plants as I can in my yard uh, locally because that way if for some reason I can't order something or I can't find something somewhere else, I know that I have plants all around me that I can use for different things. We haven't mowed our yard yet because we just had our Easter egg hunt for the grandkids and the kids. They still like to hunt eggs even though most of them are actually they're all adults. So the yard is kind of grown. And I've got lots of different things. I've got purple dead nettle. I have, um, well, I've got comfrey coming up in the garden. I'm going to cut some of that. But I also have plantain coming up in the yard. I have lots of dandelions and violets. So we're going to pick a lot of stuff today. And I'm going to use it in my freeze dryer. And because I got that working again, so I'm pretty excited. So we're going to freeze dry lots of good flowers and herbs today. So let me go get my list and I'm going to explain and try to give you some good ideas for each of them. So I got my list and it's kind of overcast. So I didn't wear a hat today, but it's still kind of bright. So I don't know. Uh, we're gonna head out here to where kind of where the orchard is and where the tallest grass is probably be because I have put down cardboard at one time and just added some stuff over there so it's really grown up we've really got a mow we're gonna get a new mower today actually uh, we've never gotten a zero turn mower and today we're gonna go get one we're actually in a position because we did a financial class a few years ago where we can actually go buy one, which is pretty exciting. Um, normally we would have to finance it, put it on a credit card. So we're pretty excited to be able to have that money to be able to get that today, but that's not what this video is about. So I'm gonna show you all the abundance that could be in your yard or around you. The only thing I have to tell you about it is if you don't have a very big yard, you want to definitely stay away from roadways. Um, they suggest, I wanna say 50 to 100 feet away from roadways just because of the spray. And you also wanna make sure that wherever you're picking, if you're picking on somebody else's property, of course with permission, that you wanna make sure that their yard, their ground and things is not sprayed because that's totally defeating the purpose. My yard is all natural <laughs> with some chicken poop uh, sprinkled out throughout it. So today we're gonna to pick purple dead nettle, dandelions, all the good stuff and some few others. So. Let me show you, I have quite the abundance. I'm not gonna pick it all, of course, because I don't need it. I'm just gonna pick what I think I need and um, what I have room to dry. So as you can see, I have, there's little yellow dots, there's purple, so that most of that purple is purple dead nettle. Um, I am gonna pick quite a bit of it though that is in my, <laughs> supposed to be strawberry bed. But, so we're gonna go over there and we're gonna pick that first. I still have my boots on from when I went out to the barn because you can see there's quite a bit of purple nettle in here. Uh, some dandelions and you can see, you know, there's like a little strawberry trying to peek up through everything. So this will just help get this cleared out. So let's get that done. So when looking for purple dead nettle, you're going to look for these types of flowers. As you can see, the top leaves actually have a purple tint to them with the little purple flowers on top. Now these stems are square because they are part of the mint family and we don't have to take it all the way down. We do want it. Well, actually I should probably because I don't want it to come. I don't want it to be in this uh, bed. So I really could just pull this whole thing up. So we'll see. But otherwise I would just cut it off like right, you know, like either right above or below this and you can actually just use your thumbnail and that's that's it that's our purple dead nettle flower all right so i got that cleaned out there's actually more strawberry plants that survived than what i thought so that's awesome some of them even already have blooms because they were underneath covered up and protected from all the cold weather and the frost that we've had come on so that's awesome all right so i'm going to show you i actually had some chickweed in here i did not save any i will sometime though because that does have medicinal properties as well but if you look here, so this is the purple dead nettle. This, while some people, if you're out foraging and you don't see this side by side, think this might be. This is a type of uh, dead nettle, I think. It's called henbit. 
and it does have if you'll see it does have purple flowers but it is um different it does have a square stem though because it is part of the mint family that you can see this is what we actually want how the flowers on top are tinged purple and um, they just look different and they have different flower or they have different flowers but they also have different leaf shapes so this is the one we want this is i've read and listened to other videos saying that these henbit does have medicinal properties as well but of course they are a little bit different than the purple dead nettle and uh, we're going to go over that a little bit right now all right, so I know some of these, but I'm gonna read these because I don't I wanna give you a good um, idea of what purple dead nettle could be used for. Now, while I didn't realize that I could actually use it for my allergies, so I can make like a tea with it or, but it is antihistamine, so these are some of its actions. It's anti, I keep hearing something, it's the chickens and the leaves back there. It is anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, it's astringent, immunostimulating, it is a nutri nutritive styptic, styptic, styptic i'm not sure what that one is um but antihistamine is awesome anti-inflammatory antimicrobial so this is one of those weeds that grows in your yard that comes up in the spring i believe that god has a plan for all of the plants that he created and when they come up if you'll notice that these come up first thing in the spring so do the dandelions and uh, my comfrey's coming out, and the com the um, the plantain is out. So these are all things that we can be using. Now these purple dead nettles you can actually eat as greens. You can add them to smoothies, which I have never done, but I guess I didn't realize you could do that. Now I know that you can eat dandelion greens. So if you have a spot where you could plant all this, you would have a continual food forest, literally. Um, you could you know harvest in your yard you could set aside a spot just for that maybe you have dogs like we do maybe you don't want your dogs or your chickens in there and you just want you know to be able to pick stuff without with knowing that there's not anything on it so that is one of the cool things about the foraging is using what god provides just in your yard like i didn't have to plant any of this it comes back in abundance every single year so i have gotten quite a bit i'm probably going to stop on the purple dead nettle um, I can always come back out and pick some if I want to eat some or add to smoothies. That doesn't have any known contradictions, but um, you just always want to be careful and make sure you check and, you know, check this information for yourself. Don't go um, just by what I am saying. So let's go ahead and do dandelions because I've already started some because I pulled some out of this bed. So I did get a few. I'm just going to go walk around. This is the harder part because these are more spaced out, but we're just going to walk around and pop the heads off of dandelions. Let's just go over dandelions real quick. They are anti-inflammatory as well. They're also alternative, antioxidant. Um, they are a bitter, so you can make a bitters with that. There's a lot of other different things. So that is the root. Um, if you go with the leaf, they're actually a bitter as well, a diuretic, a nutritive, astringent. So there are lots of different things that you can do with dandelions. So right now you can actually pick the whole plant. You can use the roots now. And, um, before, you know, I don't know about now, they're already flowering. So you might've had to do that before they flower. But in the fall, when they stop flowering is a good time to, um, pick and dig up or dig up the roots. If you want to do that, I have some that I freeze dried, so you can do that or you can just dry them. If you don't have a freeze dryer, um, my recommendation is that you hang like your purple dead nettles, bunch them up a little bit and hang them upside down to dry. I don't use a dehydrator. I don't know if somebody does maybe, um, but I don't like to heat mine up a whole lot because it does uh, diminish some of the, the properties of the plant. But you can actually make wine with dandelions. You can cook with dandelions. You can eat them raw in salads, the leaves and the flower heads. So just lots of good things that you could do. So you can make a really pretty salad with like the top of the purple dead nettles, some dandelion leaves, some dandelion flowers, and just have you a good salad or add them to a smoothie or whatever it might be. But let's go pick some and then we'll move on to our next one. It's also really nice when you find a nice little spot like this because you don't have to go too far to get all these picked. So that's nice. I'm actually just pulling, I'm just pulling the tops right off of these, the ones that are open and I'll leave the rest. Okay, 
And this is why I have this to go over my strawberries. All right, you guys, get out of there. Get out of there. Goofy chickens. All right. Okay, so I gotta fix that side. So I feel like I got enough for now. And because I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with these. So you can actually tincture, you can um, make dandelion jelly, you can make dandelion syrup, you can make salves, you can dry them, all kinds of different things you can do with these. Okay, I think I'm gonna wait on the plantain because I'm gonna do, I have four trays of my food, the, my uh, freeze dryer. So I'm gonna do violets and we're gonna do comfrey and I will freeze those. And I think we will wait on the plantain. Okay, it said I was done, but I come over here to the garden and I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these before we get the comfrey that's coming up everywhere. So these are purple violets. There are also some that are more blue and some that are white, but they usually have these little heart-shaped leaves and these tiny little purple flowers. Again, they could be white or a blue color. Now I did just learn something interesting that while they do have this bloom, I guess they also have, let's see if we can find some. Yeah, see these in here that are upside down? So these little ones in here, some of these that are, this is actually not going to bloom. It is a backup plan for this flower in case these don't get pollinated so it can pollinate itself. I thought that was so cool. So all these right here, <laughs> these are all violets. So if you plant these, just know that they do spread rather uh, well. Now you can mow these down. I have, that's how I kind of keep them under control. But yeah, it's good that I have this many. It makes such a nice feel, like a little carpet, a, day, a uh, violet carpet. Okay, so these, I'm just gonna pop these flowers off and I can make, I've made jam, I've made syrup with these as well. Now these are actually good for the lymphatic system as well. So I'm gonna read you some of that too and I believe that we can um, use these leaves too. So the information I'm getting for the violet is from the herbarium, which I actually have um, a subscription to because I can look up things and get the monographs for them and all the good information. There are a lot of species um, of violets. There's over 650 accepted species, so there's a lot. Um, now, I have the purple violet. I don't believe that I have any of the other ones, like any white or anything like that. So you definitely wanna harvest these. Of course, you always wanna harvest not like um, like at the pinnacle of the day, not in the like really hot, you wanna really like right now. Um, the sun is up and it has dried off everything and that's what you want. You don't wanna pick stuff that's wet. Like some of the dandelions I didn't pick because the sun, they were kind of on a slope and the sun hadn't hit them completely and they were still damp. And I don't, I don't want that because I, I don't want them to mold or mildew or anything or any chance of that. So you want to pick them when the dew is off, when it's dry, the sun is up, or even if it's a little cloudy, but everything needs to be dry. So for the violets, you want to pick in spring and summer. Uh, when they're in their vibrant color. So when they put up these uh, pretty little purple flowers, I think they're gorgeous. I think they're just a really pretty like lawn cover. So I have them over by the pool and everything. And as you saw, they, they will spread everywhere. So where you put them, they will spread. And I have them over by the greenhouse in the garden and they're spreading out. And I hate walking on them, but I just, I don't need them everywhere. And just keep in mind that some of the species of violets are rare and endangered so make sure but if you're finding them in your yard or your woods more than likely but always check you should be okay so you want to you want to um harvest these in the spring and the summer and the actually the leaves can be used in salads so there you have us basically you have you have a salad in your yard you know you've got purple dead nettle you've got your violets you've got your dandelions and your dandelion greens so it's just really cool that um, we have all this available to us for free, basically. 
All right, so these can be found in a lot of different places. I have some coming up around trees. I have them right here in the open. I have them up against stuff over where they don't get as much sun. So they're really pretty versatile and um, it's really cool that uh, they have them and they're, and they're really cute. So now let's see here. So the uses they have, um, they're cooling. They uh, can be used, like I said, for the lymphatic system. So you can make syrups, you can make jellies, you can make um, jams. I guess jams. I think I made a jelly. I made a jelly because of you make a simple syrup and then you add the pectin and everything. They can both be used um, or this can be used topically and internally for skin issues like eczema, acne, psoriasis, cradle cap and so forth. They're just really good for your skin um, and your lymphatic system, which I just learned that. I didn't realize that they were good for your lymphatic system. So look up these plants, these wonderful herbs that you have growing in your yard. You're going to be amazed at what they can help you do and what you can do with them. Because a lot of times you can eat them. You can make them into sweets like syrups and jams or jellies. You can tincture them. You can make salves with them. You can mix them and make salves with them. I love God's creation and I love that we have all this available to us. All right, so I'm gonna pick some of these. I'm just gonna pop the flowers off and I'm actually gonna get some of the leaves today and then I'm gonna move to a few different spots and get some because I don't wanna take everything that's right here. So I'm literally just pulling the little flowers off and I'm gonna toss them in here with the dandelions, which is gonna be interesting uh, getting all those out of there and separating them. One of the things though, when you do, if you do make a syrup or a jelly, you do have to pull these off. You don't want the green in your, um, in your tea kind of that you make to make the, to make the jelly because it will discolor it. This does take time. This would be a good project if you have little, uh, little hands that can help you pick some of these. I know I've got my grandbabies tomorrow, so we might pick some more gonna pick some of these now the only thing about this is once you pick these flowers I don't believe that this plant actually flowers again so it's good that it has that little backup plan uh, <laughs> because I'm you know I'm picking all the flowers off and that's probably why because God knew we were gonna use it and there was a backup plan so how cool is that So next up while we're over here is comfrey and you can tell that this is getting ready to flower. Actually, this one right here already has the flowers out. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I really don't want that there. This seems to be, you can see there's two more over there. This seems to be, um, maybe it's gonna be comfrey corner because I've got stuff coming up. I did have some golden seal that I purchased over here but I'm not sure that it's gonna come up. I will have to keep an eye on that and see if it's actually living or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull um, cut or cut some of these leaves off, you know, that look the best. I don't want ones that have maybe a bunch of holes in them necessarily, which I don't think that's a bad thing if they don't have anything on them. These will need to be cleaned a little bit, though, to make sure there are not um, insects on the back of them or anything like that. This is a really cool plant because it is anti-inflammatory. It's astringent, demulcent, emol emollient expect expectorant um it's cooling and moistening with a secondary drying effect so it's pretty cool now this is really neat because you can make salves out of this this is one that you don't really want to uh, use internally you want to use this externally as topical applications i make salves out of this comfrey and you want to be careful though if you use it on wounds because it has such a great property of healing that it can actually heal it over um, things you don't want in there. So you want to make sure that your wound is really clean and before you uh, apply this because it's very, uh, it's very healing and it, it really helps. You can use these leaves as compre you can put them in compresses, you can use them as uh, poultices, you can use the root as well and you can use them in um, salves and everything. So this plant is really cool. Uh, once you plant it, you will probably have it forever, and so just beware. It does come up everywhere. So this one, I planted right here, and now I have it over there. I have it over here. It's on the other side of the garden as well. So uh, yeah, so this is one, but I, I don't have to worry about it. It comes back, and uh, 
like really early. This is April 1st actually and it's this big already. So these are the ones that don't get as much sun and you'll notice that the flowers are up but the leaves are smaller and I guess maybe that's why because every other place that gets a lot of sun the leaves are a lot bigger but this makes these it makes picking these a lot easier. All right, so there you saw, they are on the trays. They are ready to go into the freeze dryer. Um, I'm excited to get this started. My freeze dryer was having some issues and we got it fixed. It just needed an update, thank goodness. Nothing else was wrong. So um, I'm excited to start freeze drying things. I'm excited to get these into different things and salves and tinctures and so forth and have it stored in my little apothecary. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to be Lovely Lights today.